Hi everyone, welcome back to my series about the Welsh gods. If all has gone to plan, then this was released just a week after my last video. What a shock! Thank you so much for your patience and continued support. Today we're looking at Bendigaid Vran, a literal giant of Welsh mythology, who serves as an ancestor god of leadership, also known as Bran the Blessed, a form of his translated name which means Blessed Raven or Crow. Bendigaid Vran is another divine ancestral figure featured prominently in the second branch of the Mabinogion. The son of the sea god Llyr, he appears to be the elder brother of Branwen and Manwydan, as well as the half-brother of Nisian and Ednisian, and is described as a giant. He was the king of the Isle of the Mighty, Britain, and had his seat at Harlech, and is mostly shown as a competent leader and hero when he has to deal with the various complications that arise from Branwen's marriage to Matholoc, the king of Ireland. When Ednisian, the villain of the tale, is angered that Branwen has been given in marriage to Matholoc without his approval, he brutally mutilates Matholoc's horses. Even though this tale has a lot of early medieval influence, the status of horses within Iron Age society was incredibly high. As with dogs, they seem to have been considered as important as humans, so this would have been an extremely severe insult. But the Gatorand manages to calm the situation, however, by gifting many precious items to Matholoch, including a cauldron which can bring the dead back to life, which may be a reference to Keridwen's cauldron. While everyone seems happy when the Tholoch and Bramwen return to Ireland and she gives birth to a son, Gwen, Ednosien's insult eventually worms its way into Matholoch's mind and he punishes innocent Bramwen. He banishes her to the kitchens and has her beaten every day while capturing anyone from Britain to make sure that Bendgade Rand doesn't hear of her mistreatment. She slowly teaches a sparrow to speak, however, and eventually Bendgade Rand hears of her plight. He summons an army from across Britain and they set sail for Ireland, although Bendigade Van strides through the water and the whole sight of the boats and Bendigade Van are described as a mountain leading a forest by Brown One. Once they land, Bendigade Van lies over a river so that his men can cross, declaring that he who would be a leader, let him be a bridge, a great symbol of his own selfless leadership. The Tholuk pretends to honour Bendigade Van by building a house big enough for him to sit inside, as he has always been too tall to enter a house before, and hides warriors inside sacks hanging from the rafters, which Ednesian finds and kills before the gathering. It goes well at first, with Branwen presenting her son Gwen, who must be about three to four years old by this time, but the sight of him so enrages Ednesian that he throws the boy into a fire and chaos erupts. As the fighting continues, the Irish begin to resurrect their dead warriors by throwing them into the cauldron, and in a rare moment of guilt, Amnusian sees the war he has caused and throws himself into the cauldron, breaking it into four pieces and killing himself in the process. Only Bendigade Ran, Branwen and seven Welsh warriors escape, though they soon learn that Bendigade Ran has been hit with a poison arrow and will die. He tells his men to cut his head off and bury it where the Tower of London now stands, so that he will forever protect Britain, though he continues to speak with his men even after his head has been detached from his body. Aside from the obvious role as a great leader and protector, it's important to stress the importance of the head within Iron Age culture. This was considered to be the seat of the soul, rather than the heart and belief which came later, and the heads of enemies were highly prized with warriors. We mostly know this from Romans who found the Celtic custom of warriors decorating their chariots, horses and spikes outside their home with enemy heads, as well as preserving them within pine resin, which we have archaeological proof of, to be disgusting. It may be that warriors took these enemy heads so that they imbibed their strength and power, but we also have a number of different burial customs involving decapitation across Britain, from burying the head separately to carefully arranging it so that it lies naturally with the body. Bendigade Run is represented by both heads and ravens. Because Bendigade Run is so intimately linked to heads, I have chosen to pair him with Bethany, which was used in folk medicine to treat headaches and other facial pain, as well as a host of other medical complaints as seen through the latter two Welsh names for Bethany on the list below. There is some idea that the name Bethany derives in part from the Celtic word for head, but there isn't enough evidence to support this conclusion, and as all the Welsh terms for Bethany do not relate to the head, the instances of coma are likely a reference to its leaves, I will not be drawing such a conclusion. Some of the Welsh terms for Bethany are Crebaia Sanfraid, St Bridget's Comb, Danhogan or Danogan, meaning toothed or fanged harrow. The Nogan Akoid, Wood Bethany, again, fanged thing of the woods. Dwivog, God's harrow. Llis Dwivog, God's harrow herb. Medhagas Lloyd, grey healer. 
and Medegar's Thoracoid, Black Healer of the Woods. Betony is renowned as a healing herb within folk medicine, where it is used to treat a number of conditions, reflected in some of its Welsh names as a healing herb. It was particularly known for its uses in treating headaches, however, and I therefore connected it to Ben Gaedran, who gave his head the most potent symbol of power in Iron Age Britain to protect his people. Betony flowers or leaves can be given as an offering to Ben Gaedran in a fresh or dried state, or they can be removed in a libation to be given to him in that way. For most potent results, steep the flowers in with mead or beer as an offering. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments and leave me a little head emoji if you've lasted until the end. Next week we'll be looking at the tragic tale of Blodiath, so if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe and leave me a like as it really helps to let me know which videos you'd like to see more of and click the little bell icon so that you can be notified whenever I put up a new video. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you again soon.